So many people want one thing with their conscious mind. I want a new job, I want a new career, I want a new life. And yet their subconscious mind has been programmed. Now think about a program. When you create a program, it's automatic. When you create a program, it runs. So the person is with their 5% of their conscious mind is having this desire for something and yet their subconscious mind is doing something else. As an example, I used to take my oldest son golfing with me and he used to say to me when we were on the, on the fairway, uh, I'm really worried about hitting that tree. And I would say to him, what tree? Because if you're worried about hitting that tree, what is the imagery that your brain is creating? You're, you're worried about not hitting it. You're doing that with your conscious mind, but your subconscious mind is creating the picture of you actually hitting the tree. That's why you're saying it. So the subconscious is, is 95%. So more than likely your body is gonna do exactly what it's programmed to do. So what's the relevance of that? Well, people say I want wealth, but they're programmed into being unworthy and lacking, right? So, so then as they begin to do the meditative work, and they start opening their heart. I was just talking to someone yesterday. When you open the center, things are gonna sift to the top. All the programs are gonna come right up. And, and when they come up like that, you're going to see why it isn't manifesting in your life. Now, don't see it as like, why is this happening? Did I do something wrong? The subconscious is actually venting. There's a certain period of time in the early mornings where we vent our anxieties. We vent our fears. It's the way the subconscious goes, let's just have this dream and let's just get it over with. So the subconscious is saying, what if you hit the tree? <laughs> what if you, you're actually, you're actually going to hit the tree? You're, you're, you're going to hit the tree because that's exactly the imagery you have when you're trying to create something. You're saying, I really want this because I'm really afraid of dying. I'm really afraid of failure. I'm really afraid of rejection, right? So the person is subconsciously and unconsciously creating the imagery that's actually being revealed to them. So how do we change that? Well, really simple. We got to start rehearsing a new way. We got to start getting into those deep brainwave states, getting beyond the analytical mind, slowing our brainwaves down, getting into the operating system and start reprogramming. Okay, so when this happens, these are the things I'm going to do. These are the things I'm going to do to create that and start rehearsing those steps, priming and reprogramming the brain into a new outcome. So I, ha I have had that uh, many, many uh, uh, years in my life, but I always have seen it as a strong sign, a strong symbol that I got something switched in my brain. I could say that I want, people say I want to be healthy. Yeah, it's 5% of your conscious mind, but you set them at the dinner table and they're, 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 doing, they're, they're, they're breaking all the rules of everything they said. So why, why does that happen? because the program is running and they can't, the program, they've lost their free will to a program. So now, that's important because your subconscious is talking to you. Now you gotta get in there. You gotta get in, in there and start rehearsing that you're gonna step away from the table, that you're not gonna eat after a certain hour, that you're gonna make better choices and rehearse them and remember what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Now, you begin to, on a fundamental level, begin to rewrite the script, begin to rewrite the program. And over time, if you make one or two new choices and restrain some old choices, you'll, you'll tend to make more better choices if, after you make a few because you'll start feeling the satisfaction of your efforts. So don't see it as like doing something wrong. It's just that the mind is polarized. And people will say that they want something, but the subconscious is saying, look, look, this is really what's happening. So, so get in there now. Now you have the, you have the information uh, to begin to unlearn those subconscious programs and begin to rewrite some new ones. We can refuse to think certain thoughts. Look how often you have refused to think a positive thought about yourself. Well, you can also refuse to think a negative thought about yourself, too. It seems to me that everyone on this planet that I know or have worked with is suffering from self-hatred and guilt to one degree or another. The more self-hatred and guilt we have, the less our life works. We find we have an inability to speak up for ourselves 
and we are always trying to please others. Or we may be angry and explosive all the time. The less self-hatred and guilt we have, the better our lives work on all levels. This includes the health of the body too. It has been my experience that the very bottom line for everyone I have worked with is always, I'm not good enough. And we often add to this, I don't do enough, or I don't deserve. Does this sound like you? Always saying or implying or feeling that you are not good enough? But for whom? And according to whose standards? Now, if these negative beliefs are very strong in you, then how can you possibly create a loving, joyous, prosperous, healthy life? Somehow, your subconscious beliefs would always be contradicting these objectives and making sure you do not obtain your goals. I find that resentment, criticism, guilt, and fear cause more problems in our bodies and in our experiences than anything else. These feelings come from blaming others and not taking responsibility for our own lives. You see, if we are all 100% responsible for everything in our lives, then there is no one to blame. Whatever is happening out there is only a mirror of our own inner thinking. I am not condoning other people's poor behavior, but we must realize it is our beliefs that attract to us people that will treat us that way. If you find yourself saying, everyone always does such and such to me, criticizes me, ignores me, takes advantage of me, or abuses me, then this is your pattern. There is some thought in you that attracts this behavior. On some internal level, you believe you deserve to be treated this way. Or, you treat other people this way, and it is just coming back to you. Whatever we give out, mental, physical, or verbal, will come back to us. When we no longer think or behave this way, the other people will change their behavior, or they will go and do that to someone else who believes they deserve it. You will no longer be attracting the experiences you say you do not want. Whether we want to change a life experience or a physical problem, the place to begin is to say so. Literally say, I am willing to release the pattern within me that is creating this experience or this condition. You can say this to yourself over and over every time you think of your illness. Say this with me now. I am willing to release the pattern in me that has created this condition. The minute you say this affirmation, you are stepping out of the victim role. You are no longer helpless. You are acknowledging your own power. You are saying, I may not understand it, but somehow I am beginning to understand that I contributed to creating this problem and now I take my own power back and I am releasing it and letting it go. What a powerful statement to have your subconscious mind supporting. As I said, resentment of others, criticism of ourselves, guilt over the past, and fear of the future are the most damaging mental thought patterns we can have. This kind of internal dialogue creates and maintains dis-ease in the body. These thoughts can destroy the body. Fear can contribute to baldness, ulcers, colon problems, and even painful feet, among other things. Criticism as a permanent habit can often lead to arthritis in the body. 
resentment long held, eats away at the body and becomes the dis-ease we call cancer. Guilt always looks for punishment and creates pain. Fear comes from not trusting the process of life to be there for us. You know, the most precious thing in our life is our breath. If you did not take another breath, you would not last three minutes. Yet you have such faith that your next breath will be there, that you don't even think about it when you exhale. Now, if the power that created us has given us enough breath to last for as long as we shall live, can we not begin to trust that the rest will also be provided for us? The next time you are frightened, think about the abundance of air and say, I trust the process of life to take care of me. Whenever someone is in pain, I know they have created a lot of guilt for themselves. Chronic pain comes from unrelenting guilt, often so buried that we are not even aware of it anymore. This guilt must be dissolved before the pain can be eliminated. Guilt is a totally useless emotion. It never makes anyone feel better, nor does it change a situation. Your sentence is now over. Let yourself out of prison. Anger combined with guilt often contributes to accidents. The degree of physical damage lets us know how severely we felt we needed to be punished and how long the sentence. Where this pain occurs in the body gives us a clue to which area of life we feel guilty about. Critical people often attract a lot of criticism because it is their pattern to criticize. They are often cursed with perfectionism, the need to be perfect at all times in every situation. Do you know of anyone on this planet who is perfect? I do not. Why do we set up standards that say that we have to be super person in order to be barely acceptable. That is such a heavy burden to carry. When I was a little girl, I had a very difficult childhood. My parents divorced when I was 18 months. I was raped when I was five. I became a battered child and grew up in the depression. My mother was very much a victim and my stepfather constantly expressed his own brutalized childhood. I grew up having a lot of resentment. I had to create cancer in my own body before I was willing to begin to release that resentment. I am certainly not condoning the behavior of any of the people who mistreated me. However, for me to spend a lifetime just running the old movie Feeling blame and anger and resentment is not doing me any good in the present moment. I learned that resentment only eats away at me, and it did. In my case, holding on to old blame and feeling resentful for all that they did to me helped to create my disease. Releasing and letting go helped me to heal myself. The past is over and done. We cannot change that now. We can change our attitude toward the past and our thoughts toward the past. How foolish for us to punish ourselves in the present moment because someone else hurt us in the long ago past. It's not worth it. I often say to people who have deep resentment patterns, please begin to dissolve the resentment now when it is relatively easy. Don't wait until you're under the threat of a surgeon's knife and you have to cope with panic too. It is vital that we release foolish, outmoded or negative ideas and beliefs that do not support us and nourish us. 
our concepts of ourselves and of life and of God must support us, not negate us. No matter what our disease, if we choose to believe that we are helpless victims and that it is all hopeless, then the universe will support us in that belief and we will just go down the drain. When people come to me with a problem, I don't care what it is, poor health, lack of money, unfulfilling relationships, or stifled creativity. There is only one thing I ever work on and that is loving the self. I find that when we really love and accept and approve of ourselves exactly as we are, then everything in life flows. You do always have options and you are at various times at varying degrees of being sensitive enough to know what your options are. But if we can just get across to you in a way that you can really feel it and want to know it, that there always is a better feeling choice every single time. And that if you will try a little bit to take that better feeling choice, before you know it, your life will have smoothed out and you will be very clear about what your path of least resistance is because the path of least resistance is the path that the source within you has highlighted in order to assist you in getting from where you are to everything you want all day every day that guidance is supreme so let's say you went to bed and you sort of <clears throat> fell asleep and in doing so you stop all momentum you do when you sleep all momentum stops so you wake in the morning and right away you have some choices you can jump right into the day into a maybe squabbling household you can jump right in the day into maybe worrisome thoughts that you carried over from yesterday or you can consciously and deliberately take an easier path you might choose to lie there and breathe a little while you might choose to get up and look out into the beautiful day you might choose to look for something to appreciate we just want you to make the correlation between how you feel emotionally and what the path of least resistance is if someone picks a fight with you and you join in with it that might be the path of least resistance because that's just what you always do and you don't have the reserves to do anything else and we're not criticizing you ever about taking the path of least resistance but when you're in the middle of the argument and you acknowledge I don't like this you're launching rockets of desire that you want to get along better not just with this person but with all persons in other words you're launching some rockets and your path just got clearer and tomorrow when you wake up you might have a better chance of going there than down that path and if you care about it in time you'll be at a place where someone will be picking a fight with you and you won't feel any inclination to join in the fight because you'll be standing in a place of such clarity hey this is not my path of least resistance but until you've smoothed it out vibrationally you don't have those options that's why when people write books that tell you how to adjust your behavior you want to kill them <laughs> because you cannot behave other than the momentum of your vibration you see what we're getting at so we want you to move forward in your day and do whatever you feel like doing because after all that's what law of attraction is calling to you in other words Esther said to us on many occasions Abraham if you guys really wanted to make this fair you would stop letting law of attraction cooperate with my bad attitude <laughs> you'd help me change the momentum you would put some really pleasant things in front of me so that I could observe that and change the momentum and we say law of attraction is fair across the board it's reflecting back to you how you feel you just have to gradually decide have we convinced you about the path of least resistance that's the most important thing do you accept that you are more than this body and that there's a source energy part of you who is a strong vibrational momentum who is calling you 
people talk about this all the time I want to be on my path right after I knock this guy's teeth out I want to be on my path right after I condemn the government or I fight with my sister I want to be on my path but first I got to take care of all this stuff that isn't the way it should be and we say you just got to decide that as early in the day as you can you can find the vibrational frequency of ease the vibrational frequency of path of least resistance and it is our promise to you that before you know it you will have figured this out please understand we are not wanting to guide you toward or away from anything we are not wanting you to ever feel that we think that you are on the wrong path because you never are you are always on your path and it is always the right path the question is how much resistance have you thrown on your trail so how much are you blocking your view of your true path your path to joy your path to clarity your path to abundance your path to agility your path to dexterity your path to clarity 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 your path to living happily ever after happily ever after regardless of what anyone else is doing you have the ability to stand in the middle of whatever it is and offer a vibrational frequency that gives you clarity about your path you don't have to be bogged down with others you see you got that didn't you